church, turn to the person next to you and say you look good in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Even if you don't think they look good, they look good in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Who's excited this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. This is the best place to be at, especially at this time. Uh, we are in a time where God is showing us many great things. Even in the world, we see all the bushfires that are going through and uh, things that are happening all around the world. Volcanoes in the, in the Philippines, uh, out here in New Zealand, volcanoes as well. We get flooding everywhere that's going on. We got Iran and the States all going at each other's necks. And uh, things are just happening. I don't know if you've seen the latest on, uh, on, uh, on, on the new chip that's coming around, where they're trying to introduce this. The whole company has signed in to, to, to sign in on this chip going through. But these things are not new to us. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, can you say amen? amen? I want you to understand this. It's all in your word. When John wrote about um, uh, uh, having exchange on a mark that's on your hand, he saw it 2,000 years ago, and he's reminding this church, hey, this is nothing new and under the sun. Can you say amen? amen. The whole entire church know this. Uh, and even like uh, uh, knowing through this, that we are familiarized ourselves with this, but God is saying that we need to lift up our eyes to heaven and remain strong. Can you say amen? amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, remain strong. Amen. No, it's not a time to be weak. It's a time to say, God, I need you. I need to get into your presence in uh, every way. This morning, as uh, Brother Kim was talking about, questioning about these things that is happening, and God said that he must be lifted higher. Amen. And I want you to turn to Isaiah, because God showed me this yesterday. Isaiah chapter 6. I was trying to avoid this. I had a message for us, but then Kim brought it back up this morning. And God is just trying to remind us, church. And here in the year of King Uzziah, let's say Uzziah. No, let's say Uzziah. I want you to familiarize yourself with the, the word this year, our mission this year. What's the mission this year? Learn and what? And return. Uh, learn and return. That, that means return to God. God said that I'm going to wound you. I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, 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 smack you over. And on the third day, he says the third rain is coming. Church, the third rain is coming. Now, when God talks about uh, days, he's talking about 2,000 years ago, Jesus died and came back. One day is the same to 1,000 years to God. Uh, and now it's two days and it's three days now that we are at. And it says the latter rain is going to be greater. Can you say amen? amen? And I want you to believe this. I want you to understand the word of God because he revealed it to me that uh, what is the mission for his church? And God is saying, I tell my church that you need to return back to me. No. Can you say amen? amen. And, uh, and this is not even any human knowledge or any human understanding. This is God's knowledge. No. Uh, and he is saying, learn his word. Learn his word. Go back deep, deep into your word. Uh, people talk about climate changes and all these things on news. It's because they don't know the word. No. And they try to answer all these questions. But right here, God is answering it in his word. Then it says, in the year of the king Uzziah died. Why did he say Uzziah died? Because Uzziah was a man who was so successful. He was a young king at 17 years old. And it says it's around about 40 years that he was one of the greatest kings. When it comes to exchange, when it comes to money, when it comes to, to, to making things work, when it comes to sowing and reaping, this was the man that they looked to. But the Bible says that at the end of his years, he turned away from the Lord. Uh, he turned away from the Lord. And God is saying when a king sits on a throne, he's in throne. He's not sitting on a normal seat like you. But God here says that he's reminding his church that in the year of the king Uzziah died, that even though people saw him as the greatest of the greatest, he did fall. Why? Because he fought of himself as the greatest. But God says no one sits on the throne. I sit on the throne. Can you say amen? Let's say God sits on the throne. God wants to remind his church that that job that you're at, that that business that you have, that even the church that you're pastoring, that family that you have, that God must be in throne. Now, this is not about us. And he says here, I saw the Lord seated on the throne. God is reminding his church, it's not Uzziah that sits on the throne, it's God Almighty that sits on the throne. And it says the seraphim came through, it had six wings, let's say six wings. Now, I want to remind you this because God is bringing to his church their reverence and their fear. And it says that these wings were blocking his eyes of these, these angels who had no sin in their lives. But they came before God and they blocked their eyes and the other wings were flying. It shows that they have reverence before God and God is saying to his church, I need my church to go back to reverence. 
I need my church to go back to the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is not being, is not trembling before God. It's having that reverence before God. Can you say Amen? Now you can have faith, and you go, Pastor Sila, there is no fear in love. Now there is no. Yes, it's a brother. No, it's a brother of faith. You need to have that fear of the Lord. You need to have that reverence before God. You need to take the word of God and say, God, you are holy, holy God Almighty. Can you say amen, church? Now look at that verse. It's three times he's mentioned holy, holy, holy. Why is that? Because it's a father, it's a son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me do it again. It's a father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Already God is revealing to his church, hey, you need to go back to the word, look at this stuff, and he cries out to God, God, I'm not worthy, I am a sinner, I am totally not worthy, this mouth is totally corrupt, everything about me is totally corrupt, and God sends this angel and touches his mouth, then God says, who will go for us? God is saying to his church, who will go and proclaim his name? And he say, amen. It's not just our inside having the power of God. It's our lifestyle. Can you say amen, church? It's the lifestyle. I can tell you that, that even Elijah come back from a great revival full of 450 men that he killed. Why? Because they bowed at this bow and he brought the fire from heaven. It's just to show us how powerful this God is. And at the end of it, he wanted to commit suicide. Why would you want to commit suicide when you have the power of God? No, it's because God is reminding us that he looked at this 7,000 other men haven't bowed down. Why? Because they're looking at your lifestyle. How many fake Christians are out there? Many people can fake it. It doesn't mean you can make it to heaven. Can you say amen? Many Israelites, 3 million came out of Egypt and they all faked it before God. And only two of them came up and said, God, it's true that we are going to make it. We have the true faith. Can you say amen? Whether you are sick or whether you are poor, whether you are rich, whatever condition that you are, are you still going to worship the King of Kings? Some people, when they become poor, when things totally go out of their lives, they go, I don't want to worship God now. It's a righteousness of man. God, when all this is going well, yes, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord, for all this. And when sickness comes to you, when poverty comes over your life, you go, God, I don't want to remember you anymore. That's when you lift up your hands. God, you are almighty God. Rich or poor, I came naked, I'm going to return, I'm going to return back naked, but I'm going to lift up the name of the Lord. Can you say amen, church? And here God says here in his word, make the hearts of the people close, make the ears dull and close their eyes, otherwise they might see their eyes and hear their ears, understand with their hearts and turn to me and be healed. Then I said, for how long, O Lord, these are the people that they are forever hearing, but never perceiving. How many church people that come to church that just sit there mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and just comes from one ear and jumps out the other ear? That's the kind of church that we are right now. But turn to the person next to you and say, I'm not that kind of church. Come on, go on, turn to that person next to you and say, I'm not that kind of church. And he say, Amen, church. No, I'm not that kind of church. I'm a church that wants to say, Jesus, use me in whatever way possible. Amen. And he say, Amen. We have a conference that's coming up. Uh, and many people don't want to go to where the leaders are. Boy, you've got to be here. Uh, you've got to be You're not serving me. You're serving the King of Kings. And I want to encourage every volunteer, whatever you have in your hands, if you have breath that comes down in you, you got to say, God, right now, saying to God one day in a thousand years, I'm going to serve you with all my heart. Can you say amen? No, Jesus comes out and he gives the kiss. Some of those who work from in the morning all the way to 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Someone start, some of them started at 4 p.m. and finished at 5. And they all got the same reward. Can he say amen? Say so even the last minute right now you can say today, church, Jesus, I want to be used for your kingdom. You're still going to enter in and God's going to say, come to me, faithful servant. Come to me that you enter into the, the place of heaven. And here I want you to turn to uh, 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 first, first Samuel. First Samuel, because this is the word of God that has for us. Now, now, you, now that you know that God wants to be enthroned, even this morning, as you worship church, come on, I want to encourage you to worship. Now, God is reminding his church, my true worship is worshiping in what? Spirit and in truth. Let's say spirit and in truth. I don't want to keep reminding you, you've got to get back to your house and start worshipping God. Practice it at home and then come to church and do it. Can you say amen? Because iron sharpens iron. You know you will see revelations from God 
But make sure you go back to the Word. Many people say that I've heard God, but they don't know this Word. How can you hear from God when you don't even know the Word? Can you say Amen? Am I speaking to someone here this morning? Are you encouraged this morning? So don't make up your mind because I can come up with some crazy stuff in my mind and I can say, God said this, but I'll never go to this. Boy, oh boy, they must correspond. Can you say amen? When I hear from God, it's definitely His revealed word that has been given to you and me. That's why there's a lot of uh, uh, false doctrines that are out there because people don't return back to the, his, his word. And the Bible says, but people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Turn to the person next to you and say, lack of knowledge. Turn to the person next to you and say, lack of knowledge. We're going to get excited this morning. Can you say amen? Uh, it's good to have a laugh. Because this road can be a bit tiring at times. But you know, as you speak, you're like, ah, lack of knowledge. Yeah, lack of knowledge. So I'm going to get some knowledge in me. Can you say amen? Okay, look to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. That God has a word for us. But let me just pray this morning. Father God, we just pray this morning, Lord God, that your word will come through into our hearts, Lord. Open our hearts that we will be receptive to your will, Lord. Lord, but first and foremost, tell first, Lord, Father, and encapsulate your people this morning that they will receive your word, Lord, and be transformed by your word, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the honor, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. And it says here, David and his men reached Ziglag. Let's say Ziglag. On the third day. And now the Amalekites, look at this. The Am Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziglag, and they attacked Ziglag and totally burned it. Not only that, they took their wives, and they took their children and everything that was in it and it says they never killed anybody but on their way they carried all of the wives and everybody they went through look at that verse 3 and when david and his men came to siglag let's say siglag yeah, it's a bit tongue twisting there but it's all right siglag uh, and this is where david and them were and they found this place destroyed by fire their wives their children totally captive and it says so they wept let's say wept no, they wept until they could not weep anymore. It says here they wept until they could not weep anymore. Obviously they cried and they cried and they cried and they cried. How many people have been crying on the holidays? Yeah. Some of you look, oh, I didn't have enough this. I didn't get the gifts that I needed to get. I didn't get what I... Can you say amen? amen. And they weep. But these guys were weeping and weeping and weeping until they couldn't see anything. And then David and his wife, Ahinoam, who was from Jezreel, and also uh, uh, Abigail. Who knows Abigail? I'm going to ask you a question. Who knows Abigail? Who's Abigail's first husband? Nabal. Nabal. Let's say Nabal. Now, this guy was a ruthless guy. No, and he was the one that was totally uh, ignorant anyway, but this is, this is Abigail, these were David's uh, wives, and they were taken captive too. And look at verse 5, it says, David's two wives had been captured on this, and verse 6, it says, the David was greatly distressed. How many of us are distressed this morning? David was totally distressed, why? Because these men, were, they, were, they, were, they wanted to stone David. Let's say stone. No, they wanted to stone David, why? Because they had a, a, their spirit was so bitter because their sons and daughters were taken. And the Bible says here that David found his strength in the Lord. Let's say amen. Are you finding your strength in the Lord? Uh, when stresses come to you, are you finding your, your, your strength in the Lord? And the word that God says here is that never get tired. Let's say tired. Now, never get tired of doing your best at the worst of times. Now, never get tired of doing good at the worst of times. And how do you get this? Is by turning to the Lord. You cannot change the past. Can you say amen? amen. Many of us have come through the past and say, Pastor Zilla, I've lived this kind of lifestyle. It's totally wrecked. I cannot, because you cannot fix the past, but you can fix the future. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? God can give you a new revelation and say to you, hey, don't worry about the past. Forget about the past. Look at the future. You're going towards heaven. I want you to change that. You can change that and make it successful. God can bless that. Can you say amen, church? Here God is saying to you, you cannot fix the past. You cannot go back and do this and that, but you can find your strength in the Lord. Can you say amen? David was, was, was going through this. He didn't know that people were going to take their wives, going to take their families away. But he wasn't going to just sit there and cry about it. He was going to say, I'm not going to turn to man. I'm not trying to fix it myself. I'm going to let God fix it. 
and he turns and he says, bring me the ephod. And he says to God, oh God, should I pursue these men? Should I overtake these men? Can I do this? God is saying to some of us, pursue it. Can you say amen? Pursue that marriage. Pursue that business. Pursue that healing in the name of Jesus. You know, pursue that thing that God is. God is saying that you are going to be successful in the rescue. Now, how many of God are you that God is speaking to you this morning? God is really telling you you've got to pursue that thing that I haven't. But first and foremost, ask God first. Many people pursue with their own strength and they end up uh, buckling up and bending and breaking. Why? Because the question is, did you seek first the kingdom of God? And this is what David said. God, I haven't got it all together. God, I must have messed up with my family. I didn't look after them properly. God, I didn't oversee them. I should have had more knowledge and this. I should have come up with this strategic method or whatever it is to look after my family. But I can't do anything, God. And God loves it when you say, oh, come to me. Lord, be in my life. God loves it. But when you try and do it by your own strength, boy, cranky, you are going to go through a hard time. Now, and God is saying to his church, never get tired of doing good. Never get tired when things are, are coming towards you. You are exhausted. God, can I do this? Don't even worry about your strength. You need to keep on going. Can you say amen, church? The Greek word there, tired, is, is uh, uh, karasminos. Uh, and here, I want you to look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, let us not become weary. Let's say weary. Now, nah, this journey that you're going on a Christian walk, you can become tired in it. Nah, you can be in church for so many years and you can come to a stage where you go, Pastor Zilla, I'm totally tired. Man, I get you. I understand what you're going through. But here God is saying, let us not become weary in doing good. For at a proper time, you will reap a harvest. Can you say amen? Who wants to reap a harvest this year? Yes. And God's going to take you right to the limit. Where uh, you're going to feel like, man, I want to give up on this. Things are going to come your way. Even the most thing that, ne that, that cannot challenge you, probably other things won't challenge you, but sickness will challenge you. But God will say, look, I want you to fix your eyes onto me. Now, and you need to say to God, God, you never planted this tree. So therefore, I tell you that tree, I tell you that sickness, get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you say Amen. Has God ever planted a bad tree in you? Has God ever put that sickness in you? Has God ever put poverty over your life? Those are trees that the enemy is throwing and he's placing it in his church. And the church is like, okay, 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 yourself, you am useless, I'm this and that. And he becomes so tired and weary and came over. You'll come to me one day and say, Pastor, you know, I'm out. But God here is saying, let us not. Can you say amen? Let us not become tired and good, doing good. For at a proper time, you will reap a good harvest. He says, therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of God. Can you say amen? amen. It is easy, but also dangerous to lose heart. It's totally dangerous. It's totally dangerous when you say, God, I'm, that's it. I'm going to give up on this. If David did the same thing, he would not rescue those people. But he turned to God and God said, pursue those people. And the Bible says that when they got to, look at it, the whole lot of them, they had come three days. They reached this place. They were walking. They were in this battle. They were going towards it. They got there. Everything was taken. There is totally no more strength. And many of us, you will go to that place where, look, your, your head is going to be thrown everywhere. Your hair is going to go all the way around. The enemy is just going to make you dizzy, spin you around, spin you around and make you so confused. But I want you to keep your feet on the ground and say, God, I am anchored on Jesus Christ. I am anchored on Jesus Christ. I'm anchored on Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to you? I'm anchored on Jesus Christ. Nothing can move me. Nothing can move me. I will totally hold on to my Jesus. This is not just a hype. This is not just a, a physical thing that happens on Sunday. This is being anchored on Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Ah, and you will not die if you totally believe in God. God, I have it in your hands. But even though I'm tired, I'm weak, Lord, I'm going to still do good for your name. You know, when we went to New Zealand, we went down to the Waitomo uh, uh, Caves and I was looking at this place. But before I even went to this place, I like to pray in the, in the morning, totally get saturated because that's where my strength comes from. You know, I want to remind you that you've got the body, you've got the mind, or you've got the, the, the body, the mind, the flesh, uh, sorry, the body, the, <laughs> the flesh, the spirit, and the soul. 
Now, and those things you need to look after this, these things, even in your body as well. So as we were going to this Waitomo holes, and uh, we're looking at all these great things, praying to God, and I felt that God was saying that there's something special that's going to happen this morning. Uh, we had only around about 13 days that we went to this place, and we're out there, and next minute we, we got these down into this place, and these uh, glow worms like are all over, there's no lights allowed that you're not even allowed to touch the rocks, they're all white. And I'm going in there and I'm going, wow, this is all the immaculate works of God. The guy come through, there was sort of like a root rock that was hanging down. And he says that if there's a, a, a bit of drop that drops down, then you are totally blessed. Uh, and I go, wow. And he goes, if there are three drops, then maybe that's a toilet upstairs. And we, everybody was laughing. You know, but he had these funny jokes and, you know, like we were enjoying it. And I was like, wow, wow, this guy's pretty funny. And then we come to this, this place where it was like, huge massive rock but rock everywhere and it was sort of like a cathedral then he stands here and he goes this is where we have the christmas carols a lot of our churches come down here and they sing down in this place then he goes on to say that even Katy perry has sang here three months ago and uh, the beatles has sung down there and then he turns around and i, was, I knew that something was going to happen this morning and he turns around and he says is there anyone out there that can sing and straight away i said martha can sing my wife was sitting there and she was like, I'm sure she was like totally thinking in her mind, well, what am I going to do? And I was thinking, what is she going to sing? And next minute, it went for a pause. I didn't know that Martha was standing there and she was closing her eyes. God help me in this. Uh, and he goes, maybe I'll turn off the, the switch lights and just say that everyone can see. And then next minute, to God. And you know how Martha's voice is sort of like that. That hope you're going to do that, Lord. All I can hear God saying is, Sila, take your Psalm on Bible. And I go, what? Psalm on Bible? And he goes, take your Psalm on Bible. I have not preached Psalm on for 15 years. And I'm going with this Bible. And, uh, and the pastor comes up to me and he says, uh, Sila, you, can you speak in the English service? This is on Monday and Sunday. They, they were getting ready for this. I go, yeah, sweet. Boys. Back to English again. I don't know what God was talking about that Psalm on Bible. And we got to Saturday and he goes, Actually, see what we're actually going to combine the Psalm service and the English service. Therefore, it's best for you to speak in Psalm And this is on Saturday, and tomorrow is Sunday. And I'm sitting there, I'm totally discouraged, and I'm going, God, how can I learn? I haven't spoken this language. Remember, when you speak back to your mother tongue, it's totally different from English. You have to like orchestrate everything nice and smoothly. And I went from the morning all the way to the night, just memorize, 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 and so I'm on the whole way through. And I said, God, help me with your spirit. And then on Sunday, I preached the word of God, and three people gave their lives to the Lord. And you say amen. And you say amen. Come on, I need you to give a hand for the Lord. Because God is saying to you, never stop doing good in whatever you have. People are going, 15 years you haven't preached. I go, 15 years? But doesn't matter. All we need is the power of the Holy Spirit and deliver the word. If you're an Italian, speak in Italian. Preach to the Italian people. If you are Mauritius, speak to the Mauritius people. If you are Indian, speak to the Indian people. Can you say amen? And when you come to this church, speak in English, not any other language. Can you say amen? How many people, you've got it all in your hands. God said, I made you, and you're going around looking for this, looking for that, looking for, I want to be like this person. You are yourself. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? God says the kingdom is within you. Yeah, he goes, don't go around trying to look for this one and try to be like Emmanuel, try to be like Nick, try to be like, you are yourself. If you are fresh off the boat like me, we are fresh off the boat. But it's not going to stop us from preaching the word. Can you say amen? Because God sees the heart. He doesn't see your ability. He says to Moses, Moses, who made your tongue? Oh, and he's like, God, I need all this intelligence. God goes, I totally smashed all that Egypt out of you for 40 years so that you can know it's not by might nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. Can you say amen? The people can feel your heart. You don't have to fake it with all your fancy English. You can just say, God, I'm going to speak in time on whatever it is. I'm going to deliver it. Right. And these people are laughing, laughing, laughing at the end of it. All they were doing is... <laughs> Lord. And we thank God for His presence. Can you say amen? This God is saying, man, I'm weak, Lord. I'm on this holiday. Lord, I'm on this Saturday, Lord. This is the time. And God goes, I'm the one that's going to give you the strength. Your strength is already upon you. For the last six weeks, I just enjoyed my holidays. Why? Because I was in prayer. Totally in prayer. Totally in prayer. There was no mucking around. It's like, God, I love this two hours of just worshiping. 
worship him. You know what? It's so true that God knows exactly what we need for our spirit. Can you say amen? Then God is like saying to some of us that you are investing in your spirit, but there are some of us that also need to invest in your physical side. Can you say amen? There are a lot of people like, yes, the spirit this, spirit this, but they don't like training. They don't like feeding their body the proper food. Can you say amen? There are, I'm telling you, what did God say to Elijah? Get up and what? Eat. He didn't say, get up, I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you this, you guys, get up and eat. You've been walking for a long time. You've been racing against that chariot. You need to sit up and eat. Yes, right. You need to take your medicine. Can you say amen? You need to look after yourself. You need to go out and train. Play a bit of soccer with John or something. And he say amen. amen. And there are a lot of people like mixing up the Bible. But the Bible is here, right here. You need a balance in your life. Some of you guys are not saying amen this morning. You see, I'm, 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 I'm putting a challenge in. I'm on about 43 right now. And by 50, I want to have to do 50 push-ups here, up here. Yeah? You want to make a deal? <laughs> But we need to do, we need to do this. We need to take care of our physical body and we also need to take care of our spiritual body. Can you say amen? Many people go, man, I want to make it to the 70. I'm not going to make it by eating too much KFC. Can you say amen? I love KFC. That's what I'm thinking of. But yeah, what, what is God saying here? No. God is saying that we need to not get tired of doing good. No. It says you are sowing the seed. It's a seed that you're sowing. And he goes, a harvest is coming for each and every one of us. Can you say amen? amen. Who wants a harvest? If you're not interested in the harvest, then something's going wrong in your heart. But God is saying like, this is my people. I want to impart great things in your heart. Uh, we've had many of you that have gone overseas and enjoyed beautiful sights overseas. That's God's blessing over your life. Uh, that's God saying, hey, look at this. I want you to appreciate all these great things because there are people that are sitting on their deathbed in the hospital. I go visiting that place and I look at God. I never ever want to be like this. But God goes, yeah, you appreciate what you have when you're traveling. You've got to say, thank you, Lord, for everything that you're giving me. Thank you, Lord, for even this place that I have. Thank you, Lord, for even this, these kids that I'm going through. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, God, that I can spend time with all these things. Why? Because I'm walking by faith. Can you say amen? Many people are walking by faith. That faith that you have, it's not a dead faith. You don't just sit there. It says that Enoch walked with faith. Well, that's mean when you're walking, you're sweating as well. No, but you've got to walk by faith. The blind man, even though he didn't see, he was totally blind. But the Bible says that he walked towards Jesus. He's not at his destiny yet. But in his heart, i got faith. I'm walking. I'm blind. But one day that I'm going to see him when he touched Jesus, he could see. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? But how many of us say, i got faith, but I'm going to sit on my bed and I'm going to cry about the past. Can you say amen, church? But God is saying here, I want you to pick up your faith and start walking in faith. When you're offering up your sacrifices, Abel was the one that offered it with faith. What are you offering God this year? I'm offering with faith, God. I'm going to give you this financial thing. God, I'm going to do this for your church. I had a person come up to me and say, Pastor Silla, here's a lawnmower for the church. I'm offering up to the King of Kings. Can you say amen? In this church, there's many people that are giving, and I'm encouraging you. Do it as if you're doing it unto the Lord. And also it's a faith that works as well. Somebody goes, man, I'm not saved by faith. Look at that Noah. It says that he was accredited. Why? Because how he worked to build that ark. Can you say amen? The ark didn't just come down. He didn't say to God, God, give me an ark. And God made the ark for him. No, 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 no. You have to build the ark. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? amen? There's a lot of people that say, look, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do Man, you're not going to get anywhere. You build your own ark. Uh, you're going to turn around and say, look, I've got to grab that hammer, that nail, and I'm going to build this ark for the king of kings. There's a lot of you that are already given to the Lord and being blessed even as you build this house. Many of us, even as we started off this journey, we have painted this whole journey. But uh, this whole church, everything that you have done it for the King of Kings. But never stop doing good. Why? Because God's going to bring a blessing upon your life. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, many of us already backed off and said, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want this anymore. There's no backing up. Can you say amen? There's no backing up. There's one thing that I've taught my daughter, and every day I remind her, babe, never give up. Never give up. Never give up. You're going to strike problems, but never give up. Even if you fight crying, never give up. Never give up. Why? Because that's faith. 
I'm going to build this thing. Even as you go through, you're building many things. You go, bless the Lord, all my soul, for this, this, this totally great thing. I'm telling you, church, I work at my, my normal job. I come through. I've even built decks, built things, and also coming to preach you on, on Sunday. I'm not bragging about something. But in my mind, is God. Never give up. Never give up. God's name is going to be glorified. I meet people who are sick. I meet people who are in the hospital before I even went. To New Zealand, I was even tired, totally worn out. And I remember a person that was in this church was on his deathbed, and someone rang up, Pastor Sheila, please come and pray. And I said, God, I don't have any more energy, I have no more strength. But as I stood in that place, I could hear nurses in the back, You gotta stop that noise, stop that noise. And all I could say, God, I got no more strength. And in the name of Jesus, get up! He's sitting right here, right now. Can you say in there? Why? Because it's not you, it's not me, it's the King of Kings. Even if I preach to you this last sermon, you can sit there and you can look at me. Boy, I'm going to give you everything. Why? Because our heart is for the King of Kings. Amen. Time is so short. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Are you encouraged this morning? Yes. I don't want you just to clap and applaud me. I want you to say, God, I want to take this year on. There's greater things that are coming for me. Can you say amen? We're going to have the greatest businessman in the church. I believe it. Do you believe it? Say amen. amen. Do you believe it? Say amen. amen. We're going to have people that are healed with cancer in this place. We have Bob that's sitting right there, seven cancers in his head. He come up here and told you that he was healed by the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Some of you that are getting that cancer healed, I'm telling you, I went to New Zealand and I placed those names. God, please, friends, please pray for my church that these people are going to heal by the power of the blood of Jesus. Do you believe it? Say amen. amen. Who wants to inform God with his glory? Amen. I want to inform God. But the question is, are you tired this morning? And the enemy wants to thrive on that. To tell you how useless, how bad, and how corrupt. And all these things that he wants to bring it down into your life. And place it in you. But here David never gave up. He got to the valley of Beza. 200 men totally withdrew from there. 400 continued to pursue the sea. They met up with this Egyptian, this Egyptian who was left there, never ate for three days. This is a sign that this is a, a typology of Jesus. Three days they didn't eat or drink. It's like he was on his deathbed. But God already prepared that man to come to David. And he says, who are you? I'm in this Egyptian. He goes, do you know where these raiding parties are? And he goes, yes, yes, I will show you. But make a promise to not kill me. And he goes, yes, I will lead you down. David got down there. And the Bible says he destroyed all these and everything that was lost. Everything that was lost, let's say everything. Yeah. Now, how many of us that have lost things to the enemy and you think that there is no way I can recover that? Today, the word of God is saying that you are going to recover it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? This is not just a word. I don't know if some of you are just hearing it for like another sermon on Sunday. This is a word of God for your life. Yeah. And God is saying everything is going to be recovered. Why? Because David never looked at his own strength. He said, God, is, am I going to overtake these things? God says, pursue. God is saying to you, 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 and me, pursue. You are going to overtake. You are going to be blessed. And the Bible says that he grabbed all these things and he had taken back. And these 400 men said, hey, we're not going to give any to these 200 men. They don't deserve it. They lacked out on us. They were totally useless. And all this, these are all the men that they, David goes, hey, 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 hey. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. The one that went down is going to get exactly the same as the one that stayed here. God is saying to the whole entire church, we are all the same in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen? No wonder why God is saying he's a man after God's own heart. Why? Because even though he's slack, but he still has a lot out of giving. And the Bible says he went all the way to Judah and he continued to give to his friends. Why? That's the heart of God. How many of us have the heart of God this morning? Even though your neighbors will park their car in the front of your house and you just want to go up there and have an argument. I wanted to do that last Christmas. But thank God they sold that car now. Now I don't even have to drive through it. But the thing is, the question is, how many people are you angry with? But God is saying, bring it into my hands. I'm sick and tired of arguing. I don't want to argue people with my flesh. I don't want to argue with my boss. I want to turn away and say, God, I leave it into your hands. I pursue you, Jesus. I'm tired of arguing with my husband, my wife. I'm tired of this God. I leave it into your hands. I have faith in you, God. I have all these things. I'm tired of paying these bills. God, I commit it into your hands. Relationships that I'm going through. I'm sick and tired of broken relationships. You just say, God, I commit it into your hands. Who needs God this morning? I need God. Why don't you all stand this morning? Bless you.
Then we pulled out musicians.